So my whole perception about this subject has become so much finer, so much more refined, so much more complex and sophisticated that it's hard to point to anything particular. Uh, but something stands out uh, for me, and I'm not trying to say this to convince anybody, but just to share something that I take away with it. I mentioned yesterday morning uh, about uh, the progression on slavery in the U.S. Uh, actually, I didn't start at the beginning of the story. Uh, if you go to Wikipedia and you look up the history of slavery, they have a wonderful chart that starts in 1700. From 1700 up to the present, tracing the changing values with regard to slavery, uh, first in Europe, uh, and then going to other parts of the world, including Russia and China and India, in different versions. Uh, and what was remarkable when I saw this was that uh, the progress uh, which we know of today started incrementally, step by step by step. Mm -hmm. And you had country after country first saying, we don't want slavery at home. It's OK if we're selling slaves to somebody else or creating slaves from Africa, uh, or where our colonies are having slaves, that's OK. Or we're buying products that are made by slaves, that's OK. Uh, but we won't have them at home. And if you see year after year from 1700, gradually this progressive movement. And then uh, by the time the US Constitution in 1789, uh, we had maybe two-thirds of the colony, there were only 13 colonies, so maybe there were seven or eight of them who said it was already illegal to have slaves in the northern states, but we had five or six states without whom we couldn't have colonies, without whom we could have never won the Revolutionary War, uh, who said, no, we still need these, so let's postpone any decision on it. And that went on, and in the 19, 1820s, 1830s, uh, when they were supposed to come around and deal with this issue, by that time the colonies were expanding across the, United, the continent, and we had new territories that wanted to become states. And in each case, when a new territory became a state, that territory had to decide, are we going to be a slave state or are we going to be a free state? And we had people from the South going to these new colonies in order to vote there, to vote that the new colonies should become slave states at a time when the whole world was giving it up. The whole world was saying, you could see very clearly the trend in the direction, and yet there were people <coughs> trying to say, we should extend this, we want to expand this. And we finally had to fight a, uh, a war that came very close to destroying that, the nascent confederation of states uh, permanently. It, ca it became really close. And interestingly enough, and maybe I mentioned it already, but uh, European, European states that had banned slavery at home, that had even banned the slave trade before 1850, 1860, uh, still allowed slavery in their colonies, or if they banned it in their colonies, they were still willing to buy and support the South because they got cheap cotton and tobacco because it was made by slaves. So we're a work in progress. And to know how long we had to go through that process and what's true for the slavery, certainly true for women's rights and other uh, democratic human rights. The thing that I got more clearly out of this meeting, uh, I became more aware than I was, I knew the idea before, but much more aware of how much in uncertainty we are in right now, how much anxiety it has generated, uh, how much questioning we have because of the complexity of life and how that shaking the fabric of so much of what we believed, we thought was clear uh, before, 
Uh, and especially after the end of the Cold War, suddenly clarity came, we thought. Now we've all seen the light and we know where we're going, and now we really wonder which way uh, we're going. But I'm left, uh, uh, in spite of all that, with a deeper conviction than even when I came here of uh, what that inevitable direction is. Uh, we are definitely in a period of great turmoil and uh, you know it's not only true of slavery and women's rights uh, World War I and World War II were fought because there were nations in Europe that were thinking we need to also be colonial powers at a time when the colonial powers were just on the verge of dissolution when the British Empire, the French Empire, the, the, the Dutch Empire were just on the verge of going to be dissolved, on the verge means in 20 years uh, they would be over. Uh, we, when we thought we were at the peak of the age of empire, it was just on the way out. And how difficult it is to see uh, what's coming around the corner. And when I landed in Moscow the first time in August of 1989, uh, wanting to think about how uh, our mission at that time was, could we propose to the superpowers a 5% reduction in world military spending? Mm -hmm. And in two years it was down by 33%. I mean, nobody was bold enough to think beyond, we weren't bold enough to think beyond 5%. Uh, and I remember Alexander telling us a few years ago at a meeting we had here on leadership, one of our nine uh, programs, when he told us the story, uh, and if I have it wrong, he'll oh, correct me, but uh, sometime in the fall of 89, uh, whether it was September or October, I'm not clear, uh, when he said that uh, Chancellor Kohl and President Gorbachev were talking about the future of Germany, and they said, uh, they both agreed that German reunification was inevitable, but they also both agreed that it probably couldn't happen for 20 or 30 years. And yet within two years, it was an absolute uh, uh, fact. I, I kind of have that feeling now. It's not something I can, of course, uh, uh, prove. But I think we are... Uh, this kind of thinking, this kind of sophisticated thinking that doesn't come up with a simplistic diagnosis or a simplistic set of solutions is really a necessary step and I hope that we can take it forward uh, and, and help that process even if we only go 5% of the way uh, in, in giving it a push. So I'd like to thank all of you for contributing so fully and richly to this event.